The death industry is changing, and Parkview Crematorium in Waterloo is one of just a handful of crematoriums still owned and operated by municipalities in Ontario. In 2019, it seemed Parkview might also close amidst competition from private operators, but the community rose to save it from the ashes. All right, uh, I'm Rory Doucette. I'm the manager of cemetery services here with the city of Waterloo and welcome to Parkview Cemetery and Crematorium. So I joined the city of Waterloo recently, uh, coming from the town of Oakville, in which I spent 22 years working in the municipality there. Um, took over here in Parkview based on the opportunity to have a cemetery of this size. Uh, and, uh, it being so ingrained in the community, it was a huge opportunity to uh, to be involved, to help be a steward, to continue this through. Uh, and then once I joined the team here, um, getting to know the staff, I was blown away and I made the right decision. Um, I do have a lot of knowledge in a lot of different areas, but there's certain individuals on the staff who have expertise in certain areas that I definitely rely upon heavily. Um, I would love to say that I'm the one who you know, we'll direct everything here, but it's a team effort and I got a strong team. My name is Brant Maddock. I've worked here at the cemetery since I was a student, since 2007. Uh, I've been operating the crematorium here full time for the last five years. Yes, I came to Waterloo to get my degree in uh, psychology, actually. And while here, I got that uh, student position at the cemetery and life happens. Oftentimes a, uh, a hearse or more often than not a van will come down and drop off a deceased individual. I'll receive some paperwork and I will go through that paperwork to make sure everything checks out and everything is accurate. I then apply a tag and a number to that paperwork and to the deceased. The deceased is then placed in the cooler until a retort is ready. I take the deceased out of the cooler when the retort is ready and I place them into the retort. After the person is placed in the retort, the doors close and the cremation process begins by having a burner come on. The person's uh, being cremated usually takes them about four to six hours for the entire process from being placed in the retort to being ready to be picked up by family or a, fun or a funeral home. Cremation temperatures usually go up to about around 1600 to 1800 degrees Fahrenheit. The way that a person is built or their age, their sex, determines how long that cremation process may take as well. So a person who has more body fat than another may cremate faster and hotter. A person who has more muscle may cremate longer and may not uh, go up to the same high temperature. After which time I take a long brush and what you'll have at the end of the cremation process is full skeletal remains lying down. And there's a drop off, an afterburner chamber that kind of keeps the air clean. But there also is a place for the bones to go to the next step. So after they're pushed back to the afterburner chamber, I usually let them uh, reside there for another hour to kind of clean off any of the wood embers that may have taken time to actually burn. Uh, after, uh, after that hour time in the afterburner chamber, I'll remove them from there and put them into a small container, which I then take to a processing room to let them cool down even more. About half an hour after they start cooling down, I'm able to take a magnet and remove any screws, bolts, Anything, anything metallic that may be in there, scissors, could be, sh could be earrings, whatever, whatever makes it through the process, I, I will remove. And also I'm looking for hips, joints, knees, anything like that, that uh, are titanium based and do not melt during the cremation process, I'm removing them as well. A lot of metallic items do not, uh, do not disappear in the cremation process and they're removed and they're placed into a container where they're shipped off for recycling. I then take the, the bones and I, I put them into a processor which is a little container with a blade on the bottom. That blade then breaks down the cremated remains down to what you would know as the, um, the ashes, the cremains, and uh, it's then handed to the family or to the funeral home. You know you're doing good for people, they need it, and every once in a while you get that thank you from the family directly, and that makes everything worthwhile.
there was a discussion about possibly uh, running this business to its its financial end, uh, then moving more towards a, a tax-based supported cemetery without having a crematorium feature here. Um, we did take a lot of public engagement and through that engagement it was made very clear to us that this is a very important building to not only the funeral homes that we work with and our, our stakeholders, uh, but as well as the community. Um, people like the consistency of having the ability to go through generations here. And that, uh, that really hit home with us um, and allowed us to change our focus to start looking to rebuild this, uh, this facility here, update everything and continue to service the community for many generations to come, which was very important to uh, not only council, but uh, the staff here as well. So there's obviously the financial value of having a crematorium like this, which allows us to support the cemetery without utilizing any of the tax base support, uh, which is very important, which allows us to thrive here uh, as a cemetery, which a lot of municipalities don't enjoy that like we do here. One of our key services that we provide is uh, a place of equity, uh, inclusion, uh, and a sense of belonging where any faith, uh, any background, no socioeconomic status will change the experience you get here and the customer service level you get within Parkview. And that's extremely important is that's a lot of the core values in the strategic plan with Waterloo moving us forward is, is to make everyone belong and, and feel like they have a home here in Parkview where in this case you know the deceased can can have a place to rest the families have a place where they can come and feel comfortable uh, and that is I think the biggest value we offer to the community is that sense where everyone is welcome we try and cater and work with everybody to make sure everyone has the same experience here and that's very important to us